Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the conversation on TOS Television Network. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning from Nigeria's federal capital city of Abuja. I hope you are ready and set to go today. My name is Adesua Osi. And my name is Merciful Lajinuma. Good morning, Adesua. Good morning, Merciful. I was waiting for you to say good morning, Adesua. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're looking sharp today. Oh, I was going to say the same about you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You see it, so it's okay. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, before we kick start the show proper as always we'll be bringing you the quote of the day All right, that was, you know, some Wednesday morning motivation for you. It's, it basically says without hustle, your talent, you know, wouldn't take you so far. You might be very talented, but you have to, you know, work towards it. So you don't just rely on the fact that I'm talented and people see me. You have to put yourself out there so your talent can work for you. That's Definitely, you, you have to put in the work. You know, we have people who we have tagged them as talented individuals, you know, from the sports to agriculture and everything, people who know what they're doing. Yeah. So is that hustle, is that, that training that, you know, dedication that commitment that everyday you know energy you put into your talent exactly. that will make you successful so gary has a wise word for that gary has a wise word for <laughs> okay right about now we're going to kick start for a part going straight into development across africa um now we're going to be going you know, to haiti where um, Haiti has expressed concern over COVID-19 vaccine. Haiti, which has more than 11 million population, is yet to receive COVID-19 vaccine. Due to this, Haiti has reported over 12,700 cases and 250 deaths from the coronavirus. This has increased concerns amongst health workers and experts in Haiti. In Haiti, TOS News gathered that the country is expected to receive 756,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine through a United Nations program focused on giving jabs to neediest countries in May. However, General Director of Haiti's Health Ministry, Laurie Adrienne, has expressed concerns over receiving the vaccine. I'm wondering why Haiti, because Haiti is, you know, one of those countries that have been very, very hit. It was hit by, you know, disasters and mm, stuff disaster, like that. Yeah. And having to be hit by COVID-19, I think economic recovery for that country mm -hmm. is probably on the low. So mm -hmm. I, I, I would think that amongst the, you know, African countries are going Which to be the first to receive. Yes, prioritize, you know, prioritize yeah, Haiti and all that stuff. So, definitely. like, it, it, so it's too. worrisome. But I do hope that, I don't know that, you know, I think the um, vaccine is on the way to Haiti. But well, I mean, what we're hoping country, to see is, yeah, every country <coughs> across the board, you know, receives their own share of exactly. the vaccine. So, pandemic becomes a thing of the past because we like cannot wait. Day, right? We cannot wait, definitely. <laughs> we cannot wait to get All right, we move over to Ethiopia where a Canadian singer, Abel Markkinen, testifier famously known as The Weeknd, has offered the sum of $1 million to relieve struggles in Ethiopia. The music star who made the donation known on his Instagram page said he is planning to provide 2 million meals to displaced people with the donations. He made the donations in Ethiopia in line with the crisis between the government and the Tigray region, which has led to the death of thousands of people and over one million people being displaced. The current donation by the singer is just one of his numerous donations following the advent of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. The singer offered $1 million on COVID-19 relief. Part of the money was given to a Canadian hospital. That's a, that's a good one for Ethiopia. Yes. And you know, we're always saying everybody should try and do their part. Those who, you know, have made name who are popular, you know, you and I, everybody can actually contribute to the betterment of society. Exactly. If I mean, if you cannot it. contribute funds, you can contribute you know, with sensitization and just talking. I personally love The weekend, and I didn't know he was from Ethiopia. You know, that's got, like, original. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, he was born and bred in, in Canada, but I didn't know he was originally Ethiopian. And it's good to see that even though he's not in Africa and didn't grow up in Africa, he's also concerned still passionate for, about what's happening. Yeah, for what's happening in his, you know, hometown. Mm -hmm. And then he's giving to what's And that's some like money, if you ask me. That is, because Ethiopia, the, 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 the things that are happening in Ethiopia at, at the Tigray region, the crisis yeah. and conflict. It's very sad. Abductions, mm -hmm. killings, and um, displacement, and all of that. So, so Ethiopia actually does need all the help all the can support get and get. support at Definitely. this time. So that's kudos to the weekend for that one. All right, moving over, coming back to Nigeria. Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce has announced Mrs. Ayomide Olajide as its new director general. She has served as a director of program and membership where she led the programs and membership teams 
to deliver the mandate of expanding the Chamber's membership network. Mrs. Olajide has also won the Presidential Award as most supportive Secretariat staff, the first of its kind in the history of Chamber. After serving as the Acting Director General for almost a year, she was subsequently appointed as the Director General of the Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce in January 2021. Before this role, IMD has worked with women in management, business, and public service, WIMBIS, as programs manager. That's quite impressive. Good, 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 good one. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I mean, we've just rounded off, you know, the International, the International Women's Month, Month and yeah. we celebrated them. People, you know, women are getting to the front line. And I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with breaking everything. Breaking stereotypes and yes, just taking the Breaking rent, stereotypes yes, because exactly. this woman is someone, you know, who, <clears throat> who is passionate about women's development, women in management and everything. So and then, I yeah. think it's a good one. And we look forward to more. More, actually. I know. More. There's more to be done. <laughs> Definitely. All right. We move over, you know, talking about Africa, the continent. Um, World Bank has said that Africa is in need of $12 billion to buy and distribute COVID-19 vaccines in order to halt the coronavirus disease. Mm. This was revealed in a report by the World Bank. Also, the World Bank and the IMF, that's the International Monetary Fund, are hosting meetings this week to discuss vaccines, amongst others. That's a lot of money. That's a lot, a lot of, money. of money. You know, And then uh, yeah, at yeah. a time where countries in Africa are having to borrow from the World Bank, and, you know, especially countries that are very, very, you know, hit by the pandemic and, and looking towards economic recovery. I know COVID-19 is like priority now, Definitely. And then, you know, getting the vaccine has also has all, also been prioritized. And I know the countries, countries like Nigeria, you know, set out, set aside funds, you know, for the purchase of COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. So I just heard that we meet up or something is done. Because and it's equally distributed. It's equally, people. yeah. You know, the dis distribution is, is it's another, a different, it's a different ball game, game entirely. Game entirely. Yeah. So I, I thought we we're going to get there. We're capable of doing it. Definitely. We're going to get there. Definitely. All right, talking about COVID-19, it's about that time. Well, we'll go on a break to bring you COVID-19 updates from across Africa as Collated by Africa Center for Disease Control. Welcome back. That was COVID-19 update from across Africa. And as I will always tell you, and I know we've been saying it like, I think yeah. for the past every five... Day. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Actually. Every day. Do your part. I mean, the numbers are, you know, not very encouraging. And I know the world is talking about a third wave right now. And Africa, as I think, cannot afford a third wave of COVID-19. We're still battling with the second wave. And we're still talking about needing so much money, you know, to get COVID-19 Vaccine. vaccinations, vaccines and all that stuff. So just do your best to ensure that you know we can boldly say that there's no COVID-19 in Africa and doing your bit it, it means that you have to you know be socially distanced with the next person exactly. you know avoid large crowds and uh -huh. everything you know you always wash your hands mask. you cannot do so much really yeah. like it's these things are important that's what I always tell people like it they is. are very important is. prevention is better than cure exactly and then if your country your state has started, started our started rolling out vaccine, please do register to get vaccinated. The, the, the registration process is quite easy and then the vaccination process is also quite easy. So don't be left out. All right? Of course, always wear a face mask. <laughs> okay, always. Yes. yes, true that. All right, we are going to go on a break now. And when we come back, we'll be taking you through newspaper headlines for this morning. TV network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live, watch out for the latest updates on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV network mobile app, available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV news from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism, where the prism of objectivity and accountability. 
It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am. Welcome back to the conversation showing on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. And of course, you can always stay updated on our newspaper and, you know, other, you know, segment of the show by, you know, following our social media platforms at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And of course, watch the, the program, stream it live on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. It's that time we will bring you the newspaper review, you know, some of the major newspaper, you know, dailies, and we'll get to the headlines of some of them. We begin this morning with Blueprint, and from the very top, NNPC Mayor, Mayor Technimont SPA signed Port Harcourt refinery contract. That story can be found on page 25 of the Blueprint, and underneath that is Dangote to boost agri through strategic investment. Mm -hmm. That can be found on page 22. And then the headline underneath the, the blueprint tag is Alkali emerges new IGP, that's Inspector General of Police, as gunmen <coughs> hit another emo police station. Mm -hmm. And the rider, uh, we have two riders under the story. Bandits kill eight, abduct 25 in Kaduna, two Chinese in Oshun, and that story can be found on page nine. And gunmen ambush troops in Benway, two soldiers missing. Mm -hmm. That story can be found on page six. And then we see FCT tension in Tunga Maji. As lawyer folks kidnap attempt and that's uh, that story can be found on page 13 of the blueprint we move over to the very obvious you know gaping headline there talking about the cjn to the juson that's j-u-s-u-n why i can't persuade governors on financial autonomy and that can be found on page six and we have three riders the first one is strike cripples court activities nationwide the second one is government governors rather must implement executive order 10 that's coming from the judicial workers. And as soup, that's Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, explains Polytechnics shutdown. That can be found on page six of the Blueprint newspaper. And underneath the picture of the day, we see IML project 6% growth for global economy in 2021, 2.4% <coughs> for Nigeria. That can be found on page 23. And then we have four uh, uh, head headlines just been in the newspaper. And that's Anambra FRSC returns 700,000 narrow cash to accident victims relation. That story can be found on page seven. And then just besides that, wanted drug baron nabbed in Nasarawa, 1,330 kilogram intercepted in Edo. Mm -hmm. that, that story can be found in page 13 of the blueprint. And we want to return home, Northeast IDPs beg President Bari. And you can find that on page 14. And then um, the final headline for the Blueprint newspaper this morning is talking about COVID-19. Why states were directed to halt vaccination halfway? Coming from the federal government of Nigeria. And that story can be found on page 18 of the Blueprint newspaper. Quite interesting headlines on the Blueprint newspaper. Yeah. I mean, the Blueprint always have interesting headlines. Definitely. So you should get yourself a copy, you know, if you want to have intel on all of those stories. Moving away from the Blueprint newspaper to the Daily Trust, starting from the top as well. CJN intervenes as judiciary workers strike, paralyzes court activities. Beside that one, favoritism responsible for Nigeria's backwardness. That's coming from former president, good luck, Jonathan. IMF projects 2.5% growth for Nigeria. That's a positive news. And then, um, you know, moving to the very gaping headline, after Daily Trust story, Buhari fires IGP Adamu over poor management and escalating insecurity. The first rider under that headline, lawyers plan fresh suit. President can hire and fire. Ex-AIG set agenda for new IGP and the last rider under that story, meet new police helmsman. Um, then the picture of the day, you know, is a picture of, you know, the former Inspector General of Police at Damu and then the new Inspector General of Police. And then under that, World Health Day, WHO makes case for fairer 
healthier post-COVID-19 world. Under that, military politicians responsible for the vote in local governments. That's coming from former president, Alicia Gomez Basinger. And then 2023, ex-Afeni Fere leader, Southwest traditional ruler, back to Nubu. And then the last headline there, Emo IPOB raise another police station after Oshibajo's visit. All of those stories you can get on the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, we move um, over to the Daily Times and then we'll begin from the very top as always. IMF increases Nigeria's 2021 economic growth forecast to 2.5%. That story can be found on page 5 of the Daily Times. And then the very gaping headline says, Baba replaces Adamu as acting IGP. That can be found on page 2. And, again, and then again, we have the picture of the day talking about the new Inspector General of Police, the acting Inspector General of Police. And on the the picture of the day, we see three headlines there. The first one is refinery NNPC firm signs $1.5 billion Port Harcourt refinery rehabilitation contract. That can be found on page two of the Daily Times. The second one is talking about the Paris Club refund. Diligence followed in Paris Club refund debt payment, says Malami. It can be found on page five as well. And the last headline of the Daily Times this morning is talking about a strike. Polytechnic teachers begin indefinite strike. That can mm. be found on page four. You know, we have all the stories talking about strike this strike, morning. And it's just yeah. very saddening, you know, to it's, hear it's, it's just, at this point in yeah. time where we're talking about education, education sector to, you know, be activated to like the very maximum it can get because we need people to know what's happening, you know, to learn. And we're talking about strike. At yeah. what point will all this thing? You know, it, it was just yesterday we were talking about, you know, being tired of hearing us to strike here in year out. I think like twice a year. Twice even, a year. Like, you keep hearing mm -hmm. they're going on indefinite strike. Mm -hmm. And then so it's not just, you know, today it's not just the universities that are going on strike. Even the polytechnics, polytechnics are going on strike. Well. So we have doctors on strike. We have universities First, on strike. We have polytechnics. And we, have the polytechnics we also strike. have judicial we have the ju talking about strike. Exactly. So, so it's like, it's like right. every sector is going on strike. Okay, moving away from that to the news direct, the Nigerian news direct. Starting from the top again. Ogun to launch tech-based MSME Innovation Fund that I am very excited about. Massive job creation, antidote to insecurity. Um, Agbola Odeyemi saying that. Malam Amin Ukano International Airport resumes international flight. And then just underneath, you know, um, the very good, just the very gaping headline on the Nigerian News Direct. Why Buhari removed IGP Adamu, that's coming from Minister, appoints Baba as acting IGP. Potaka Refinery, NNPC, Mayor, Tech, Technimont SPA signed contract for rehabilitation. Dangote launches driver's training center to curtail crashes. Atiku not qualified to run for president, not Nigerian by birth. That's coming from AGF Malami. And then just underneath the picture of the day, NAVDAC warns Nigerians against Mexico manufactured hand sanitizers. Gunmen raise another Emo police station. And then the last um, headline on the Nigerian News Direct this morning, ASIP to federal government, no going back on strike. All right, we'll move over to the very last um, newspaper daily for this morning, and that's the business day. Begin from the very top, you know, to get analysis and data on the market. Um, you can get the business day, check the market monitor, um, which is at the very top of the newspaper. And over to the very gaping headline there, petrol to reach 215 naira per litre <clears throat> without subsidy boom for gas vehicles and that story can be found on the business day and then side by side with that story is customers buy foreign rice bagged as local brands mm -hmm. as dealers dodge ban mm -hmm. uh, that can be found on business day as well and then inside the business day looking about the feature article story zimbabwe ghana south africa market return 10 times more than nigeria's mm -hmm. that can be found on page two of the business day Hmm, quite interesting headlines across all, you know, the major Nigerian dailies that we've read out to you. And as I always say, you should be fully abreast of what is happening in the country. Whether you're Nigerian living in Nigeria or you're Nigerian living outside of Nigeria, or you're just interested in what happens in Nigeria, get, get yourself a copy of, you know, these dailies that we've read out to you. You can get yourself the e-copy or the hard copy. Or you can just check out our website, www.toscvnetwork.com to read up on all of these stories. Now we're going to go on a break. When I come back, I'll be taking you through what's trending on social media.
Welcome back. It's about that time where I take you through what is trending on social media. My favorite segment of the conversation, by the way. But before we get into all of that, don't forget you can follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. So you don't miss out on anything. Just subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube. And as I always say, you can stream the conversation on www.tostvnetwork.com. Now, bringing you back into what's trending on social media. Now, if you've been following, you'd have read even, you know, the development across Africa and then across, replicated across all Nigerian dailies this morning. You'd have seen the news of the summer IGP being replaced by a new, a, a, a new um, IGP. Now, um... So the news of Usman Al-Khali Baba replacing um, Mohamed Adamu as the new Inspector, Inspector General of Police has been trending a buzzing on Twitter for the past 24 hours. And this is kind of kind of intricate because um, Adamu's tenure at, at, at you know at, uh, at expired. Mm -hmm. he, he he was supposed to have retired I think three months three months mm -hmm. ago, but his tenure was extended by another three months. You know by the president, mm -hmm. and then after spending two months and a few days in office. He, he was fired and mm. then was replaced by a new Inspector General of Police yesterday. And so they've been back and forth about that on Twitter. And I'm going to read out a few tweets, you know, to that regard. The first one is from Senator Shea Hussani. He says, goodbye, Adamu. Rest well and regain your lost weight. I sense a sarcasm in that one. Like, is there <laughs> sarcasm? And then this one is from JJ Omojua. They extended Adamu's tenure only to fire him on the road. And then the next one is from Ayemo Juba. Adamu gave his last order and they gave him his own last order. Inside life, um, it was smiling emoji. And then this is from at Yemi Fash. She says, or he says, if you understand the Nigerian police, you will know that removing that Adamu fellow as IGP is a win for us. Solomon Arasa was the last IGP we had that cared about citizens' human rights and the professional misconduct of his officers. Let's hope the new guy will do better. Master, what do you think about all of this? Yeah, definitely. You see, we've been talking about the issue of insecurity, insecurity, and insecurity. Every mm -hmm. morning we come to the show, we tell you one thing happening, and what is the, you know, what is, what, what are the officers doing? Everybody mm -hmm. that is involved in this process, everybody that can be held, you know, accountable, accountable. for this process. So mm -hmm. it all boils down to the force, meaning the, pol the police force, because they are the responsibility of the protection of lives and property. So. Who do we hold accountable? I mean, any chaos in any issue, you know, that we have to discuss about, you have to bring a group of persons or someone that we can hold accountable. So I think it's pretty normal. I I think that before now, you know, there have been so much controversy on, on, on the internet on what to do. You know, he changed some cabinet um, um, members. members of cabinet before, New you know, we still had some issues. So people have been saying, look, why not restructure everything? So like I said, every strategy, every tactics, we need them right now because Nigeria is at that, is at that place where we need every intelligent, you know, person to be on board. So if you feel, if the government feel that this person is not working, is not doing his work, we're still having an issue, when we thought to have passed that level by now, of course it's a welcome development. When mm -hmm. someone does not perform, right from, you know, even the grassroots level, primary school, secondary school, when they, when, when they get a class monitor, and the class doesn't seem to, you know, uh, you know, behave well or anything, they'll look, what are you doing? What is your job? And mm -hmm. they change. So it's a normal process. And it's, it's, it's a sad one. It may be a sad one for the family and, you know, for um, the, the, the outgoing um, um, I, IGP. But it's a welcome de development. But I, I, I personally wouldn't think that it would be a sad one for him or his family. Because, Why do you think so? Because he, he, he had served that five years already. Mm -hmm. we were, like when when he wasn't replaced at the time he was supposed to be replaced it, 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 it brought tension people were talking about it. It, it he was supposed to have gone today the president was supposed to have you know appointed someone new today what's happening and then we're waiting and then he he was you know reappointed and then like you said his tenure was expensive do you know this thing that comes with firing someone I, I, there is a stain I, I, know a what you, I know what you're saying it's not like you resign from the office exactly so it, that's why that's why it, the controversy is brewing it's like you trusted this person enough to not even retire him at the time that he was supposed to retire. And now you're firing him, and so then, it's very yeah, ironic. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like you extended his tenure by three months. Okay, it only been there for two months, and you fired him. So if you if you could fire him now, why didn't he just appoint someone new then? Very funny. Exactly. You so <laughs> that's the back and forth. But we do hope that yeah, I think across the dailies they said mm -hmm. that the reason why he fired him was you know the brewing insecurity, poor, yeah. poor implementation and stuff like that. And then you just read, we just read up, you know, on all of that. We really out. do hope that this new find IGP, out. you know, yes, you know as, everything as, as that he's going to do, yes, exactly. we have to start seeing results. Exactly. Definitely. And as the last tweet said, 
it has to be someone that really does care about you know the people and then the rights of the people as well because i know that over time nigerians have lost trust in you know especially the police force mm. nigerians have lost huge trust like True. nigerians have no, they don't even see them as friends anymore mm -hmm. and i think you know one of our guests was saying i think that's why they could actually just go to the police station and burn it or attack it because yeah, they don't I'm see these people protests as, and all yeah and all of that stuff but i do hope that with this new, new, you know, new appointment, Things trust is regained in the police force, and then we can we'll actually see. Right yeah, we can actually just look security. at them and see that look, these people are for us, and they're going to be protecting us, and then we, you know we don't have all of this back and forth. Okay, that's the watch you can take on what's trending on social media. It's about that time where we go on a break, and when we come back, we'll be taking you through what massive calls at the crux of the conversation, and that is the big story. <music> North to South Africa. East to West Africa. TOS TV Network is your digital first Pan-African news network, bringing you news from across the continent. Visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com and follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Watch us in Welcome back to The Conversation, showing on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. And of course, it's that moment where we bring you the big story, the crux of the conversation. That's the crux of the show. That's the spicing on the show. We'll talk about, you know, trending issues, issues of national importance, issues that affect you and I and, you know, in Africa and everything. So today we're talking about the strikes, the impact of strikes in Nigeria, talking about the education system. And, you know, it has been proven that students, you know, perform less in examinations after returning from a strike period. Mm -hmm. Most students do not read during strike period, while others tend to forget key points from lecturers. As a result of the long wait between lectures and examinations, this morning on The Big Story, we'll take a look at the impact of incessant strike actions in the Nigeria education system. Now, Nigeria's federal government is poised to hold an emergency meeting with the Academic Staff Union of Universities over the union's threat to embark on a fresh strike action. The spokesperson of the Ministry of Education, Ben Gong, said in a statement on Monday that the meeting is billed to be held Tuesday by 11 a.m. Now, away from the Academic Staff Union of University, today, the Academic Staff Staff Union of Polytechnics are threatening, are threatening to go on an indefinite strike and they did say they're not going back on that one. And then so Anderson Azibe, that's ACID president, who broke the news, you know, today said the industrial action takes effect immediately. According to him, members of the union have vowed to shut down polytechnics across the nation till the federal government meets their demand. SAB said the strike became imperative after the expiration of an ultimatum it gave the federal government last year to revamp the poor state of polytechnics and monotechnics in the country. Now, you know, before we continue, I want mm -hmm. to ask you, Masterful, mm -hmm. how many times did you did you experience an acid strike while, while you were in the university? And like, how did that affect you? What impact did it have on you? You know, when people begin to count, um, you know, occasions, count events, it's because it is countable. It's yeah. because it's something that is memorable, yeah. <laughs> I, on the other hand, I saw it as a norm. It's oh. sad to say this, but I saw it as a norm. Like, it was part of the curriculum. Uh, One time, wow. we go on strike. To an extent, it's a, it's a mixed, it's, it's a mixed uh, um, feeling, really, because whenever we're on strike, we're like, okay, it's a break. And of course, it's normal because everybody goes on strike because government university I went to. 
But then and again, it's very sad <clears> that <throat> I have to, you know, think back and see that this was a norm and it's, it ought not to be so. Yeah, no, Some people can count it and say, oh, I had four years in the university. I spent four different strike, you know, sessions. And it was, it was memorable because, you know, we went home, we got fat, we ate, we came back and it was cool. People forgot things and everything. But it's, it's a very sad thing. I cannot count. But I did go on strike like a normal school session. Do you understand? It's like yeah. a curriculum. Like a, you know, at this point in time, okay, we're waiting. Is this supposed to be a strike this year or not? And then it's like, hmm. All right, we expected it, so it has hit us. So it's very sad. It's very sad, and, and, and like you, I don't, th I don't know if I remember how many times, but the most memorable one for me was, I, th I think I was in two hundred level at the time, and then we went on, when we went on ASO strike. No, it was labor strike first, and then so it was like hundred day, you know, one in strike or hundred day, the hundred days or something, and that was like about three months. So while we were happy that we we're going to go back to school after three months, ASO went on strike. So I ended up spending six months at home. With a you know, label strike and acid strike. And then funny, f funnily enough, the demands weren't met at the time. So I think over time, I think after about a year or thereabout, we still went on another one month or thereabout strike. So I ended up staying longer in school than I would have expected to stay. And like, and I, like I did say on the show yesterday, my younger sister calls me and she tells me, look, I'm tired. I'm supposed to be in school for four years and it's go I'm going on six. I'm tired. Like people that went to school together, done. Forgot mm. that they went to school. I'm still here. So, I mean, my final year, and then it struck. Then the pandemic came, it became worse. And she was like, look, I think I'm done. And I, I just had to tell her, you're almost done. You know, just see. She was like, I've even lost interest. Do you understand? I think that's one of the impact it has on people. They don't, so a lot of persons, after staying that long, mm -hmm. you begin to see that, look, I don't think I even have school interest. Is school is not, because some of them, like my younger sister, she's a very industrious person. She started to do business. And then she's making money. And she's like, look, what am I going to school for? And, and I told her, look, you need the certificate. You already started, just finished. I know you're making money, which is good, but you need a certificate. And, and it's okay what they're actually advocating for. You know, deployable states of the Nigerian education system, mm -hmm. fix that. You know, Teachers maybe lecturer well, salary, fix that. Do mm -hmm. you understand? Our education system, I'm sorry to say at this point, is almost nothing to you write said, them you, about. You said something, you said demands were being met at that time, or the demands were met. Is that what you saw on the newspaper houses or the media stations? No, no, I said the demands were not Did they come out the to say, they were not, have, Because some people are saying No, the demands were never, not ever, met, but yeah, the, mm. the, you know, there's always a back and forth negotiation, and it was like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Do do Just go complete. back to the classroom. And then they went back, and then after a bit, even when I was doing my final clearance, there was a strike and it delayed my final clearance for a bit wow. it, it was Christ it, and that's why a lot of persons would tell you look I can't school in this country not because they're not even saying because I don't trust the curriculum it's because of the educational system because like people are going to school you're you're having to calculate the number of time you're going to spend in school mm -hmm. you're and you're having to, plan to inf plan, you know, infuse you know the strike actions into it and now like we said it's not just ASIF that is going on strike ASIF is going on strike too. Um, the labor, uh, um, judicial system are going on strike. So it's like back and forth. When you feel like you're done from this one, another one. And like a colleague was saying this morning, like the doctors are gone on strike, right? Mm -hmm. And their demands are not still being met. Why are you going on strike at this time? My thinking, point. Thinking, because it's like, it's like you're playing with us. We do know that what you're actually, you know, requesting mm -hmm. for is for the people. It's for the better But you're not people, even putting our interest still, at the front burner at this still. point. Because you know very well that the demands are not going to be met at this time. I mean, doctors have been on strike for how many, how many days now? It's not been met. Labor goes on strike and nothing happens, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's the back and forth. You've been going on strike. Actually, have been going on strike for the longest time possible. And then nothing has been done. I think they're still, they they're are, still they are, advocating they are, for the same I, I think instead of someone saying there are two sides to this coin, I think there are several sides several to this coin. Sides, because if, if you look at it really, the reason for the strike action is so the government can hurt into their voice. Mm -hmm. But then again, this has happened. There's an on and off. There's an inconsistency in government saying something and doing another. another so thing. what then? Do we continue to use the same method, the same process to exactly. achieve what is is seemingly never Not coming? working? I, I was I was going to say that it seems as though. Looking at how it, how it is now, it seems to story. I, th I think they're enjoying it. The government because has developed it. a thick skin to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's like you say you're going on shark and they'll be like, All right, you guys we've are had tired. this before. It has happened back. before. You guys will come back when you're tired. Like when, when the doctors went on strike, I think the Minister of Labor did say, No work, no pay. No work, no Since pay. She wants so, to what are you, strike, so what's no really problem. happening? It's... Stay home and we're not going to pay you for that. So it's basically saying, Look, you have no choice. Come back to work because I'm not even going to listen to you say you're going on strike because of whatever reason. So now I'm thinking, they have actually, you know, the 
develop thick skin and they probably have lost the back of this no work no pay thing. definitely so we should we should really not do. start to look for other ways and other because measures that the students do not have this thick skin to exactly. back exactly we don't have no, time now we're we having we have two like like i said there's several sides to this coin because we have the people you're you're seeking something for mm -hmm. and you're fighting these people for these people mm -hmm. now these people have developed a, a way to go back and forth every year you know we come back but again the students on the other hand are suffering it every time, every time. and they there is no you know alternative way to you know help them because really, when people go on strike, it's, it's left to the parents and or guardians exactly. to continue the schooling and everything. It's crazy. Government or, or, you know, they don't come and say, oh, look, since we're on strike, we have alternative lessons, it's covered by the government, you know, do this. Because, the, at, like I keep saying, if an action is to the detriment of one, then why go, when you are supposedly supposed to be fighting for these people, okay. and they are the ones so, so, um, um, and keep suffering it year after year. So then is it necessary to still keep going on strike? Personally, I don't think it's necessary. I do not think it I is, I think really. we should, the, the academic staff union of universities and the academic staff union of polytechnics should start looking towards, you know, other ways to, you know, drive home their point. Other ways that are not, that is not at the detriment of um, the students, because, mm -hmm. They're going back to school after a long um, um, lockdown, long pandemic, um, the effects of the pandemic. Yeah, staying for going the back longest to time possible. People, the state for, people are beginning to like, oh, finally, I can go back to They're school. They're trying to even uh, catch up. Yes, and some of them are even writing exams at this point. I think yeah. you're talking about, it's, it's very, it throws you off balance for the longest time possible. And, and, and I said, like I said, I think they should start looking towards, you know, alternative measures. Definitely. Because start looking towards technology. Okay, you want to go on strike, no problem, right? Go on strike, but learning should continue. Maybe you, you do you do learnings from home. You give assignments here, you know, stuff like that, so they can continue. You are at home, but you you don't stop learning. Like I'm I'm an advocate of you know, um, tech innovation and digital innovation, mm -hmm. right? We cannot keep doing something you know the same way. It's not working. We understand that you want to stay at home. Look, if you don't want to pay us, if you don't want to you know. I don't think, I don't know if it's the pay they're fighting for mm -hmm. or just, you know, the, the, the uh, educational system in Nigeria, improving the educational system and the educational facility. But if you want to say, I'm not going to return to the classroom until this is met, you can stay home for one year if you want to, mm -hmm. but learning should continue. That is my learning solution. Then it should continue. We should, we should look towards digitalizing our education system in Nigeria. And the, I think um, that that's promoting gonna, remote promoting learning. Remote learning too. So I think that's going to be, you know, favorable. There are people who are in final year who are supposed to be writing their projects at this point, the dissertation for, you know, people who are writing dissertation. And then, you know, having to now prolong it, it's, it's, and it's, I think it's, Nigerians it's, should, you know, definitely start to look for alternative ways alternative to make sure ways. that and my, my solution are getting educated as yes. time goes Educations, on. Because we continue. cannot have loopholes and having p um, children stay back at home doing nothing, mm -hmm. just eating and getting fat. They, I may not be a scientist here, but it messes with the brain. It does. Going to school, it shifts your back, focus. Staying, it shifts yeah. your focus. Yeah. You're not focused. And, uh, you know, balance. according to reports that we read this this morning, yeah, the, they came out and say, look, people are the, the distance between learning and examination. People are failing, not because they do not know it, but because that span of attention. Is attention, and then it, it does something to you when you are in the educational um, facility, in education, when you're in school. You know, I'm in school, I have to study. This is why I'm here. But when you're home, you're laid back. You're pretty laid back. Nothing happens. No you don't even know when they're coming. And they'll be like, oh, the strike is off. And then you have to go back to school. And they were starting exams. So it's, like I said, it, 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 it pushes you off balance for a bit. It's not very good. Especially, you know, um, in, in, in Nigeria where education is, is um, examination is, you know, the test of knowledge. Test of knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in And some country. people, according to what some people are saying, that they're beginning to think that the, un the unions are benefiting something from this on and off. There's always good, now, yes, like, exactly. It's not being political exactly. because they're always saying, "Oh, look, I think the next time it's post." Like I, I read on Twitter one one time, someone was like saying, "Okay, like every strike, you know, session or anything, when the, the unions meet, they, they always get paid or something." Like I don't even understand. Like <laughs> we I don't know where that's say, coming from. We cannot. Say, I cannot definitely there's say. Always, but, there's always going to be speculations as to you know what. But then again, alternative measures. Should alternative be measures, and mine that's is what we want. mine. My my alternative to this is digitalizing education in Nigeria. I think if we digitalize education in Nigeria, it's going to solve a lot of issues. We're going to, you, like, imagine having to say, okay, I'm not going to come to the classroom. Mm -hmm. 
But then again, you guys can, you can we can take have lectures online. You guys can submit assignments online. We can have exam. And I think Nigeria felt the impact of you know the digital education system during the pandemic. Like mm -hmm. a lot of countries continued education online, but it took us a yeah. while to actually Before adjust. We, we adjust it, 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 and we have not even still, still fully adjusted. adjusted. We are still not adjusted. And I think we should look towards that. Remote learning, you know, all of those stuff. Remote learning using. Uh, um, Media, that's the mainstream media. There's mm. television, radio, you know, that's for. That's now going, you know, to, you know, rural education and yeah. stuff like that. Just using all those for education. It may not be but fully affordable, when, but I think... No, it could be affordable. To... We could we, we have national television. We have state-owned state, state -owned television stations. You could have, you know, learning times on all of those. Like, you could have um from, from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Okay, you're talking you about schools yeah, talking or about, private, um, you know... No, 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 I'm school, talking about no. schools on, on television and on radio. Just putting, you know, paying people to do that on television television on a radio but that's just looking at rural education and looking at it from the grass from the bedrock right. that's maybe primary and secondary but for looking like tertiary education and you know the impact of strike actions on in this level at this that level of education then we should look towards digitalizing education in Nigeria I think that's going to go a long way to solving all of this Definitely. back and forth Definitely. that we have in the country Definitely. all right we'd well, like to know what you guys think so just drop your comments you know on what do you think especially you know if you're Nigerian student what do you think has been an impact on of, you know, incessant strike actions on you as a student or on the educational system, you know, entirely, in, 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 in its entirety. And how have you been able to survive it as well? Because <laughs> I like the way you know, said survive. Not really, really cope with really, it, really, but really, survive so, it. It's a survival experience, <laughs> really. Mm. Okay, thank you guys for joining us on the conversation this morning. Don't forget to drop your comments on TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also you can stream the conversation on www.tostvnetwork.com. And also subscribe to TOS TV Network on, on YouTube so you don't miss out on anything. So you can get notifications because we have an amazing lineup of programming there for your viewing pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Odessa Welsi. And I am Masterful Ajinamo. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.